الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهدا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to lessons in fiqh the chapter we're dealing with is the chapter that deals with tayammum the purification by soil or the dry ablution and hadith 109 brother Noor will read it again for us as we did not have the chance to continue in explaining what, uh, the things that deal with uh, tayammum. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet wasallam said, I have been given five things which were not given to anyone else before me. Allah made me victorious by O oh, of frightening my enemies for a distance of one man's journey. The earth has been made for me and my followers a place for praying and means of purifications, its meaning by performing tayammum. Therefore, any one of my followers must pray wherever the time of prayer become due. In another version, the soil of the earth has been made for us as means of purification if and when we do not find water. In another version, the soil has been made for me and my followers a mean of purification. Okay, now the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ was given that no other messengers or prophets of Allah uh, uh, had been given the same thing before was that the Prophet ﷺ was victorious even before he traveled the journey of a one month journey. And he was victorious by Allah Azza wa Jal throwing the fear of him in the hearts of his enemies. And this is not only for the Prophet ﷺ. This is also for those who sincerely follow him. And this is found worldwide. Now we have this fear of Islam worldwide. And they shouldn't because Muslims are the most peaceful people on earth. Just for a handful of criminals, this does not stain the Muslim uh, 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 religion, does not stain the Muslim follow the, the Islam, uh, the Muslims and the, the followers of Islam, just because of a handful of criminals. Look around you on the whole world, in the whole world. You would find that there are Muslims from, spanning from, as far as the Far East, in China, in Indonesia, until the West, in the US, and Europe. And they are peace-loving people. They are hard workers. Yet again, people are afraid of them. And why is that? It is the fear of them being good citizens and spreading their religion. And what does their religion call for? Does it call for violence? No, it does not. Does it call for uh, harming others? No, it does not. Our religion governs our lives. It tells us how to communicate. It tells us how to deal with our wives and children. It tells us how to deal with our neighbors. It tells us how to deal with our, deal with our relatives. It tells us how to deal with the non-Muslims. And our guide in this process is the Prophet ﷺ. And whoever does not follow him is not a good Muslim, if a Muslim at all. So in Islam, when we want to talk to a Christian or to a Jew, we don't hit them. We don't spin in their faces. We smile in their faces. We try to be as kind as possible to them, to show them what Islam is really about, to give them the best example possible. And this is a misconception that some uh, Muslims have and lots of non-Muslims believe. They think that Islam is uh, a religion that uh, promotes violence. And it, it is uh, a religion that promotes keeping people away from others or uh, uh, not being able to interact. This, this is not the case. Look uh, around you. You definitely have neighbors that are Muslims or co-workers that are Muslims. You have friends that are Muslims. And you can, I, I assure you that although they are not 100% perfect, yet they are better than 
so many others. So this hadith tells us that the Prophet ﷺ was made victorious by awe and fear. Not that the Prophet ﷺ uh, was a, a man of war. On the contrary, he was a man of peace. And whenever they asked him for peace treaties, he would uh, uh, comply. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was always uh, 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 the weak one. And yet they attacked him. And they went out there, they, they kicked him out of his uh, hometown. And they went after him to Medina. They did not rest uh, 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 until they could have terminated him and his followers. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all what he did was defend himself. And then he went on to spread the da'wah, spread Islam. And he it, it, it did not go to fight. If you want to convert to Islam, that's great. You're among us. You share everything with us. If you don't want to convert to Islam, you have to pay uh, uh, taxes. And we will protect your country. We will protect your land. You will not do anything. It's our responsibility. And if you refuse us to come in and spread the word of Islam, then it's war. It is jihad. And one would say, then there's no compulsion in religion. Yes, there isn't. There's no compulsion in, in religion. But this is the same thing that every superpower is doing. You have to dominate. And they dominate their own ideologies. They dominate their own uh, filth and uh, uh, freedom of uh, sexuality. They dominate <clears throat> things that uh, are not accepted in logic nor in religion. But when Islam dominates, it dominates countries and spreads peace. So no one, a Muslim cannot even hit a non-Muslim without being punished. He cannot abuse him. He cannot take his wealth or money. He cannot trespass. He cannot do this. He cannot do that. So many restrictions just to give a non-Muslim his dignity and honor. He's living among us. He's paying his taxation. He has to be protected and he has to be given the perfect uh, 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 idea. We have to portray to him the perfect way of being a Muslim nation and a Muslim uh, uh, country. So this is the awe and fear. It's a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then we move on to tayammum. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this earth, the whole earth, is a suitable place for us to pray. So whenever one hears the adhan, if you are on the mountains, if you are uh, uh, in the desert, if you are in a park, and you, the, the time for prayer is, has been called, you pray. You don't have to go to a church or synagogue. You don't have to go to a, a place specially designed for prayer. Of course, unless you are in the vicinity of a mosque, then you definitely go to pray with the congregation. But if you are not close to a mosque, we don't have to wait and say, well, I'm out of city now, so I have to wait until I'm in the city and pray. No, you can pray anywhere. On board a plane or a ship, even if you're in a spaceship, prayer is, is, is not void at all. You cannot skip prayer. Five prayers every single day and night, you have to pray it. It's, it energizes your faith. It's, it's something for you. It's not something for Allah Azza wa If you pray five, ten, hundred times, Allah will not gain anything out of it. It's strictly for your benefit. Mustafa? But aren't there two exceptional places where you can't pray, like uh, bathrooms and places where there are graves? Well, you can generalize it a little bit more. Now, we're not talking about the places exempted from earth, because even earth itself, even if you're praying uh, on a mountain and there is filth or impurity in front of you, can you pray on this spot? No. You have to choose a spot that is pure, that is tahir. So we're not talking about specific things. We're talking in general. You don't have to go to a certain location to pray. Your prayer is accepted, even if you're next to a mosque. And you have an excuse not to pray in the mosque. You can pray outside of the mosque. You can pray in your house, which is next to the mosque. Now, it's obligatory to pray in the mosque, but if you don't, your prayer is accepted. You have a sin because you've abandoned praying with the congregation. But your prayer is correct anywhere you pray. Now, 
in regards of graveyards and uh, uh, toilets and, 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 and places of, of, of uh, junkyard, junkyards. And the, the hadith will come, inshallah, uh, later on. The, it's a different story. It, it's, uh, and it's, these are exceptions. But we're t talking about generalities. Now, you can pray anywhere. That's great. And you can also purify yourself using earth. And this is tayammum. And we will come to explain this, inshallah, uh, on the following hadiths. But if in the case of uh, uh, loss of water, or you cannot use water, or you have scarce amount of water and you cannot use it because then you will die of thirst, then you may, may use the dry ablution. You also may use it if you are ill or you have something that prevents you from washing your limbs, an injury, burns, or so on, bandages, broken uh, arms, or whatever. And we will get to this, inshallah, uh, later on. <clears throat> and then the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the booty or loot, and we went through that. And then he says uh, about the intercession, and the last and f uh, fifth thing, that he was sent to all humankind. Previous messengers, may Allah have peace and blessing upon them all, used to be sent to their tribes, to their people. Moses, for example, Mustafa, Moses was sent to? Uh, ben Israel. Ben Israel, the sons of Israel, the Jews. And Jesus uh, Zeki, Jesus Christ was sent to? Ben Israel. Also, the sons of Israel, the Jews. Now, uh, Abraham was sent to uh, uh, the Phoenicians or the Ashurians or whatever the tribe in Iraq uh, uh, he was sent to. I wasn't there, but uh, I know that he was sent there. Uh, Muhammad, on the other hand, وسلم, was sent to all mankind and also to the jinn. Mm -hmm. So he's not on only sent to humans, he was also sent to jinn, uh, thaqalain. And sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the seal of the prophethood and that is why he was sent to all mankind because there will not be a messenger after him there, there will not be a prophet after him and anyone who claims that there's a messenger or prophet after him is not a Muslim he's a kafir regardless of what they say or think or do because he is the seal of the prophethood sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so he was sent to all mankind and any objective, objective uh, 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 student of knowledge, if he studies objectively the Qur'an and the Sunnah, he will find that 99.9% .9 is false proof. Uh, proof. You, can, you, you, can, you cannot question it. It is logical. It is perfect. And that is why Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, when he went to Al-Habasha, and he spoke to the king of Habasha, Najashi. Najashi was telling him, what is this new religion that your prophet brought? If you listen to the things he listed, it's all common sense. He told them that he told us not to fornicate. He told us not to do this and not to do that. And my cameraman waves to me and says that this, we have to pause for a break. So please stay tuned and we will be right back, inshallah. Uh. Covering the manners in Islam that a Muslim is supposed to have in Islam. There is a strong link between having good manners and piety. And then he said, I guarantee a dwelling in the highest rank of Jannah for the one who perfects his manner. That indeed, truthfulness leads to piety, to righteousness. And righteousness and piety leads to Jannah. Uh, the Prophet used to always uh, maintain family ties. Gentleness in Islam means to treat people with kindness and with tenderness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Uh, 
Uh, as we've said that this hadith tells us what the Prophet Sallallahu has been given and the messengers and prophets of Allah were not given as him, the five uh, things. I think we've spent enough time talking about this hadith. We should move on to hadith no number 110. Narrated Amr bin Yasir radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, uh, if I may interrupt, do we say Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu anhu or anhuma? anhuma? Why? Because Ammar was a companion and his father was one of the first martyrs in Islam, Yasir. So, and who was uh, 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 the mother of Ammar? Sumayya. Sumayya. So Sumayya and Yasir. Uh, they were all slaves and uh, they were tortured and killed by the mushrikeen. So that's why when we say Ibn Abbas, we say radiyallahu anhuma, may Allah be pleased with them. That is Abdullah, the, the, the narrator, and his father Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet. Both are companions. But when we talk about one companion that is a Muslim and his father is not, so we say radiyallahu anhu, such as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. We say radiyallahu anhu. Mas'ud was not a Muslim. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, he's one, Anas. But when we say, yes, Ammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu anhuma, may Allah be pleased with them. Please go on. Narrated, Ammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu anhuma, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sent me on an errand. Then I became junub from seminal emission in my sleep. I did not find water, so I rolled on the soil like an animal does to perform taymun. Then I returned to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and mentioned that to him. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it would have been sufficient for you to do with your hands this way. He then struck his, ha struck his hands once on the soil and then rubbed the left hand on the right hand, on the right, and the exterior part of his palms and his face. In a narration of Al-Bukhari, he, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, struck the earth with his palms, both hands, and then blew off the dust and rubbed both of his palms over his face and hands. Okay. Now, Ammar ibn Yasir was sent on a mission. He went. So, uh, may Allah be pleased with him. And while he was away on this mission, he had what is called the, uh, called, uh, the nocturnal emission or wet dreams. It happens with everyone. So... He had this wet dream, and he did not have water enough for him to perform the obligatory or the total bath. He did not have water to uh, perform ghusl. So he didn't know what to do. So he picked his cell phone and called the Prophet ﷺ. They didn't have any cell phones. And, 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 and he has to pray. It's prayer time. He cannot wait until he goes back to Medina. It may take a day or two. So the only thing that came up to his mind was, okay, I know that tayammum, dry ablution, which is striking the, the, the earth and wiping the face and hands, is good for praying if I don't have water for the minor impurity, not the major sexual impurity. Hadith al-Asghar. Now, I have a, I'm in a dilemma. I don't know what to do. I have this major impurity, which is sexual impurity, and I'm not sure if, it's, if this... Stroke is enough. It, it seems a little bit uh, too small for the whole body. So the only thing that came up to his mind was he tried his best. So he rolled on the floor, on the ground, like animals do. And he dusted his whole body, thinking that, well, this should suffice. And he prayed. And when he went to the Prophet wasallam, <clears throat> told him, and he told him that I did this, so what do you think? Should I get a first prize or what? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, that, that, was, that wasn't needed. All what you needed was this. And he did the way that tayammum we all know, which is striking the palms on the, on the ground or on the floor, on the soil, on the rocks, on whatever you could put your hands on, on the, floor, uh, on the ground. And then he wiped his face. Of course, there's a, another version that he blew so that uh, you don't have any dust or uh, particles that may uh, you know, uh, harm you or bother you. And he did this, wiped his face, and his 
hands. That's it. You don't have to go to the elbows as if you're forming evolution. Now, there are a few things I think, I believe strongly that we should, you know, uh, uh, consider. Imagine those who come and say, tell me what's the logic behind this? What's the logic behind that? When you tell people that wearing gold for male is forbidden and it's permissible for females, they would say, why? You tell them the Prophet said so. I said, again, why? It's, it's not logical. I'm not going to accept this. There are people that won't accept anything that is not logical to them. And this is unacceptable from them. Why? I'll tell you why. Now, what's logical for me may not be logical for you. Now, it's, it's like extremism, fanaticism. If someone looks at me, he would regard me as a fanatic. So this guy is, is extreme. He, everything is haram, 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 haram. Regardless I, if I'm saying that Allah says or the Prophet says, they would regard me as extreme. But on the other hand, they would say that this person who has these characteristics, he shaves his beard, uh, um, he does this, he does that, he listens to music, he watches movies and he enjoys his life, he may go to uh, uh, the discotheque um, once a week, he might have a you know, social drinker, uh, a couple of drinks here or there, may, may, may smoke a joint here or there, He's, he, he prays. They would say that, ah, this is moderate, this guy is A-OK. -okay. But if this guy goes to the West and he lives among the non-Muslims, they would consider him as to be a little bit tight. He's a little bit extreme. Why? Because his wife doesn't dance with us. His daughters don't date our boys. And he doesn't, do, he doesn't eat uh, 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 this or he doesn't do that. There are limitations. So extremism is different depending on how you look, which end you're looking at. Likewise, if you talk about logic, if you ask anyone, how do you feel about stealing from others, they would say, oh, this is bad. We, we can't accept this. This is wrong. But if you go to a professional thief and ask him, how do you feel about stealing from others, say, piece of cake, I, I enjoy doing this. And I think it's a good thing. Everybody, everybody should try it. But if you ask this thief about sm smoking pot, he said, oh, no, 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 that's bad. It's bad for you. It makes you do things. It, it, it can make the police catch you. So it's bad for the business. And if you go to a junkie and ask him about drugs he's consuming, and he said, well, man, it makes me high, it makes me good. I'm okay with that. But if you ask him about stealing, he said, ooh, that's bad, bad news. So the logic is different. And Islam tells us that Everything in Islam is logical, but your logic may not uh, uh, elevate to this level in every single step. You may understand few things, you may understand lots of things, but there are things that your logic is un unable, unable to uh, uh, understand them or comprehend them, so you have to follow without asking for the logic. And that is why we tell people, follow the Qur'an and follow the Sunnah. Don't go... Left, right, or center. Just follow the Holy Quran. What brings us to this is that uh, the Prophet ﷺ told us how to perform tayammum. Let's go to the logic. A Christian comes to me and say, What's your religion? I say, Our religion is to testify that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. I say, Okay, tell me more. I say, We pray five times a day. Uh huh. How do you pray? I, we do this and that. He said, what do you do to pray? I say, we perform ablution five times a day. Said, What's ablution? He said, well, I wash my limbs, I turn the water in my mouth, I rinse my nose, I wash my face and my, my, my feet. He said, how many times do you do that? He said, well, the, the average is three by five, it's 15 times a day. God, this is nice, man. You clean your, your limbs with water? Your, your religion is a religion of cleanliness. I love your religion. Um, 
And so you're happy. You know, the Christian is enthusiastic about your religion. And then he says, what happened if you don't have water? He said, oh, it's a piece of cake. You just hit the soil with the, your hands and wipe your face with the soil and, and your hands. He said, what? What are you talking about? A, a while ago, you are talking about washing and cleanliness, and now you're asking me to dirt my face? Are you, are you crazy? So, well, uh, this is uh, Islam. Um, uh, gee, let me look. Uh, yeah, I never thought of it this way. God. And then you start to have your own doubts. You shouldn't. Who told you to perform ablution in the beginning? Allah. Who told you if you don't have water to perform the tayammum, the da'a ablution? Again, it's Allah. So then you have no problem. You should follow and comply with the instructions of Allah the Almighty. And that is why one should always stick to the Quran and stick to the Sunnah. And we should not go on and on trying to find logic behind every single thing because this is one of the greatest doors for Satan to enter. He will, he will come to you and say, okay, I'm convinced. Intoxicants are forbidden because they blow your mind off. Stealing from others is forbidden because it causes the spread of chaos. And uh, 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 killing people is bad because somebody, uh, someone else would come and kill you. But I, I have this thing towards gambling. I'm a compulsive gambler, and I, I love Las Vegas. You know, with the roulettes and with the slot machines and with the poker. It's fun, man. And I have a lot of money. So why is it haram? He's enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I can't buy this. I'm, I, I don't want to take this anymore. This is the biggest door for Satan to come and penetrate your faith and iman through. Because then he casts his doubts onto you, thinking that religion is not a perfect one. Your religion is the perfect one. You cannot find loopholes in Islam, while you can find so many in other religions. And this is the power and the greatness of Islam, that it is a one religion that is 100% full. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. But inshallah, next time we meet, we will go through the uh, issues connecting Tayammum and until then fi amanillah wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.